Sam Bankman Freed's bank just failed, the feds are hiding it, and the taxpayers could end up paying for this. What's up, guys? I'm nobody special. And what you're looking at here is Farmington State Bank in Farmington, Washington. That was once known as Moonstone Bank, and it's a bank that Sam Bankman Freed, the biggest crook in a generation, was part owner of. And after 136 years, this little bank in the sleepy town of Farmington, Washington, is closing its doors forever, the victim of some of the biggest crooks the world has ever seen. So how does this tiny building that's about the size of a shed that you'd never know was a bank if it didn't say bank on the front door, how does it end up embroiled in the biggest fraud in a generation? Well, to understand that, you have to understand the timeline of events. It all started in 1887. Grover Cleveland was president. Construction had just begun on the Eiffel Tower. Washington State wouldn't even be a state for two more years. But in the sleepy little town of Farmington, the Farmington Bank was founded. And for 133 years, nothing happened at this place. Sure, people came and went. There was customers. There was savings and loan going on. But this bank stayed innocuous. It was just this sleepy little bank in this sleepy little town going about its business, not bothering anyone. And that would all change in 2020 when this guy, Jean Chalapin, rode into town and bought the bank. Now, besides being unable to prove to me that that's not a rug, Jean Chalapin is also the president and CEO of FBH Holdings and the president and CEO of Deltec Bank. And Deltec is Jean Chalapin's bank that he owns in the Bahamas, where it's noticeably safe from U.S. regulators, much like Sam Bankman Freed kept FTX's headquarters in the Bahamas. And if you're even thinking about owning any cryptos, Bitcoin, anything, you better read up on Jean Chalapin and Deltec first and understand what it is you're getting into. Because besides doing business with FTX, Deltec is also the only bank that would even consider doing business with Tether. And if you think FTX was bad, just wait until Tether blows up. And one day Tether will blow up. This is the biggest private sector fraud in the history of mankind. And it's only a matter of time before it goes. And Jean Chalapin's Dell Tech Bank is the only bank in the world that will touch Tether with a 10-foot pole. When no bank in the United States would be caught dead doing business with people like Tether. And in a textbook example of why mom and dad teach us to beware of strangers with candy, Jean Chalapin rode into the town of Farmington in 2020, throwing money around, and he bought up Farmington State Bank. Why would the biggest banker in all of cryptocurrency go from the Bahamas all the way across the U.S. into Washington State to buy a tiny little bank that nobody's ever heard of in a town that nobody's ever heard of? Now, it's important to point out that when Jean Chalapin bought Farmington State Bank, it wasn't Deltec Bank that was buying it. Deltec is a bank in the Bahamas, and there's no way that U.S. regulators would have ever approved that sleazy bank setting up shop here in the States. So Jean Chalapin used his shell company, FBH Holdings, to buy Farmington State Bank. And that was enough to get Jean Chalapin past U.S. regulators. And on June 30th, 2021, we finally got our first whiff of what John Chalapin was up to. This is a letter from the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. And notice up in the top corner there, this is the letterhead for Mary C. Daly, the president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. To all banks in the 12th Federal Reserve District, the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, acting under delegated authority, has approved the application of Farmington State Bank in Farmington, Washington, for membership in the Federal Reserve System. That's right, folks. Farmington State Bank, which was owned by a shell company that was owned by the CEO of the sleaziest bank in crypto, was signed off on by Mary Daly, the president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. And it's not like he was hiding, folks. He was in plain sight. There's his name right there on the directors, Jean Chalapin. And there is Mary Daly's signature. Everybody knew what was going on here. I guarantee you Mary Daly already knew who Jean Chalapin was and what he was into, and yet she personally signed off and welcomed Farmington State Bank into the Federal Reserve System. She's handing the keys to the money printer over to the guy who handles the money for Tether. And this is Mary Daly who personally signed off on Farmington State Bank, owned by Jean Chalapin of Deltec Bank, to enter the Federal Reserve System. Now, Mary Daly has made quite a name for herself as a champion of issues like climate change and divisive racial politics, but she's also the head of the Federal Reserve in the district that was home to First Republic Bank 
and Silicon Valley Bank. The second and third largest bank failures in U.S. history happened in her district on her watch, and she personally welcomed Farmington State Bank into the Federal Reserve System, and yet there has not been any call for her resignation anywhere in the press. So let me give you one. Hey, yo, Mary, you suck at this. You should resign. It felt good to get that out in the open. And just a few months after being welcomed by Mary Daly into the Federal Reserve System, this trademark was filed with the U.S. Patent Office. The trademark for Moonstone Bank was filed on March 1st, 2022. And who filed that trademark? Well, as a matter of fact, here it is down here, the party name Farmington State Bank. This was on March 1st, 2022. And immediately after filing that trademark, Farmington State Bank started doing business as Moonstone Bank. There's their logo and whatever that thing over there is with the lines going through it. This is what Farmington State Bank turned into. Now, I just want to add that to the people of Farmington, nothing really changed. If you drove by this bank, you didn't suddenly see a big sign that said Moonstone Bank. You didn't see a sign that said under new management or anything like that. As a matter of fact, if you drove by, what did you see? You saw Go Cougs written on the window, the local high school mascot. As far as the people in Farmington were concerned, nothing had changed at this seemingly innocuous bank. But little did they know, everything was about to change because six days later, on March 7, 2022, Captain Cucumber himself, Sam Bankman Freed, bought a 10% stake of Moonstone Bank formerly known as Farmington Bank. But much like with John Shalopin using his shell company FBH Holdings to buy Farmington Bank because Deltec never would have got away with it, Sam bankman free didn't use FTX to buy his stake in the newly named Moonstone Bank. He used his own personal slush fund, Alameda Research, which you may realize by now was really just the trading desk that Sam bankman free used to steal money from FTX customers. And here we go on March 7, 2022, the press release hit the tape FBH Corp., that's Jean Shalop and Shell Company, raises $11.5 million in private equity funding from Alameda Research Ventures. And this was $11.5 million from Sam Bankman Fried's trading firm for a 10% stake in Moonstone Bank that a week earlier was Farmington State Bank with one branch and three employees now being valued at $115 million somehow. And a few months later, on October 24th, 2022, we finally found out what John Shalopin and Sam Bankman Freed were up to, why they had bought this little bank, and why they had joined the Federal Reserve System. They wanted the keys to the money printer, and that's what they were about to start doing. October 24th, 2022, Fluent Finance and Moonstone Bank accelerate crypto adoption by issuing US Plus Stablecoin. A stablecoin issued in the United States was the holy grail of cryptocurrency. It's something Jean Chalapin could never do in the Bahamas with his Deltec bank and with Tether. They were all banned from doing business here. So they used shell companies and bought up this little bank that nobody's ever heard of in a district run by Mary Daly, who was incompetent and too worried about woke politics to pay attention to all the banks blowing up in her district. And they were about to start printing money for themselves by issuing stablecoins. That is right up until the November 6, 2022 article in Coindesk that torpedoed FTX and Sam Bankman Freed and started the whole sequence of events that ultimately led to the collapse of FTX. And if you want a few laughs and a crash course on how that went, you can check out this video I did explaining the FTX collapse in just under 99 seconds. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check that out. But long story short, FTX blew up. The whole scam was exposed. Everybody found out what was going on at Farmington State Bank. And Jean Chalapin and Sam Bankman Fried's plans were ruined. But that wasn't the end of the story because now the regulators involved, the same regulators who have been asleep at the wheel or blindly rubber stamping or, dare I say, complicit in this scheme, they started sniffing around looking to recapture some of all those embezzled funds that Sam stole from FTX customers. And they caught up with some of it at Farmington State Bank because they stopped using the name Moonstone after they got caught. On January 24th of this year, Fed seized $50 million from Farmington State Bank tied to Sam Bankman Fried. And over the course of the next few months, the assets at Farmington State Bank went from $98.9 million in September of 2022 all the way down to just $16.3 million as of their latest filing at the end of June. And then just 10 days ago, it seemed like this story 
was finally over for Farmington State Bank. After 136 years in business, after surviving all of the calamities of the last century, the Great Depression, two world wars, disco, the Star Wars sequels, on August 2nd, 2023, Farmington State Bank announced that they were being sold to Eastern Oregon State Bank and that they would be closing their doors forever. This tiny little bank that stood for over a century in this tiny little town was gone and now there are no banks in the town of Farmington anymore. The bank, one of the few businesses still operating in the Whitman County farming town of about 150 people, sent its latest announcement Tuesday telling customers that their deposits and bank accounts have been sold to the Bank of Eastern Oregon, which has a branch in Kofax. Now, I want to point out something here, and it's vital to understanding what's going on in this story. They do not list a sale price of this bank. As a matter of fact, nobody lists a sale price of this bank. Supposedly, this bank has been sold to the Bank of Eastern Oregon, but I can't find anywhere, not in the FDIC newsletters, not in the bank's press releases, not in any newspaper anywhere. Nobody is saying how much Farmington State Bank was sold to the Bank of Eastern Oregon for. So I decided to look at Farmington State Bank's latest balance sheet to see if maybe I could guess how much this bank was bought out for or to see if it was even bought out at all. Maybe this bank was about to fail. And as always, the answer lies in the balance sheet. Or in this case, there was more questions found in the balance sheet. Here we go, the latest balance sheet for Farmington State Bank. This was issued June 30th of this year. And the first thing I want to talk about is the asset column. This is how much money and how much stuff the bank has. Now, the total assets of the bank are right here above my head. And these numbers are in thousands. So this is $16.3 million in total assets. And then I went to go look at what the liabilities were. And here we go under the liabilities category. We've got total liabilities, again, right above my head here, of just over $4.9 million. And the way you determine the value of a bank is you subtract the bank's liabilities from the bank's assets and you arrive at the equity capital. Well, subtracting the liabilities from the assets yields $11.4 million. With $11.4 million in capital on just over $4 million in liabilities, on the surface, this looks like the most solvent bank in America. This looks like the best-run financial institution in the freaking world. And of course, everything we know about Farmington State Bank or Moonstone Bank and the dirtbags who controlled it for the last few years is we know for a fact that this was not the best-run financial institution in the world. This was a hotbed of criminal activity. So I started digging closer into the line items. Now, looking in the liabilities, I didn't really see anything outstanding. This is a little bank. They only have $4.9 million in liabilities. That's the deposits of their customers. That's any loans that they borrowed. None of these numbers really jumped out at me as anything resembling a problem. But it was in the asset column that I finally found something. And the first thing that jumped out at me in the asset column was this one right here. Loans and leases, net of unearned income and allowance. $11.6 million. This bank that only had $4.9 million in deposits somehow made a loan of $11.6 million to somebody else. And that $11.6 million loan is being carried as an asset on the bank's balance sheet. And that is literally all of the value of the bank. If you take away this $11.6 million in loans, this bank is insolvent they would have more liabilities than they would have assets. Now, if that $11.6 million sounds a little familiar to you, let's rewind again to March of 2022 and Sam Bankman-Fried's $11.5 million private equity investment into Moonstone Bank. That number matches almost perfectly the amount of loans being carried as assets on the books at Farmington State Bank. And this right here, is what's failing this bank. And today at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, my suspicions were confirmed when this press release was issued by the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve Board issues enforcement action with Farmington State Bank and its holding company, FBH Corporation. And note some of the language that's used here. The Federal Reserve Board on Thursday announced an enforcement action against Farmington State Bank of Farmington, Washington and its holding company, FBH Corporation. That's important. They're not just going after the bank. They're also going after Jean Chalop and Shell Company. In 2022, Farmington improperly changed its business plan without notifying the bank's supervisors and obtaining prior approval for those changes. 
Farmington has previously announced that it will voluntarily sell its loans and deposits to the Bank of Eastern Oregon. And this is the really important part right here. The board's action ensures the bank's operations will wind down in a manner that protects the bank's depositors and the deposit insurance fund. And the deposit insurance fund, that's key. Remember, when you hear FDIC insured on a bank account, that means that if the bank fails, the FDIC slush fund, the deposit insurance fund, will step in to give you your money bank. Well, why does Farmington State Bank, which according to their latest balance sheet, has $11.6 million in capital, why would they pose any threat to the deposit insurance fund? This bank has plenty of money to cover its deposits. Or does it really? Reading on here, the action also prohibits Farmington and FBH from making dividends or capital distributions, dissipating cash assets, and engaging in certain activities without approval from its supervisors. So they're freezing the assets of both the bank and Jean Chalapin Shell Company. And again, the answer is in the balance sheet. That $11.5 million of stolen money that Alameda Research, aka Sam Bankman Freed, used to buy the 10% stake in Farmington State Bank, which was later turned into Moonstone Bank, that money ended up in the loan book of Farmington State Bank. And what I suspect happened here, and the reason why the feds are freezing Jean Chalapin's shell company, is because Farmington State Bank, which is now run by the Chalapins, went ahead and loaned all of that stolen Sam Bankman freed money to Jean Chalapin himself in the Bahamas. And you see, that way, Jean Chalapin didn't actually accept any payment. He doesn't own any taxes. It's actually a loan. You don't owe taxes on borrowed money. And so that $11.6 million up there, $11.5 million of it, it's gone already. That was stolen money from FTX customers. The feds are trying to reclaim it, and they suspect that they're not going to be able to. That's why they're freezing both the bank and FBH holdings, and that's why they're saying they're doing it to protect the deposit insurance fund. Because if you take away that $11.5 million loan that Jean Chalapin's bank made to himself, then now that $16.3 million in assets would only be $4.8 million in assets, not enough to cover the $4.9 million in liabilities at Farmington State Bank, which would leave the deposit insurance fund, aka the taxpayers, on the hook for that extra hundred grand. And of course, that's assuming there are no other losses hiding anywhere else in Farmington State's balance sheet. So once again, you've got to look under the hood at what's going on in these banks, at what's going on beyond the headlines. Farmington State Bank was not bought out by Eastern Oregon Bank. Farmington State Bank was forced to give itself to Eastern Oregon State Bank. And the reason why we can't find a purchase price anywhere is because there isn't one. Because this bank had already failed all but in name only. The bank was already insolvent and it was worthless. And I'm willing to bet that when the smoke clears from this, we're going to find out that much like in the case of First Republic Bank, where JP Morgan got all kinds of goodies thrown in by the feds in exchange for taking on the liabilities, I think you'll find that Eastern Oregon got similar guarantees Similar off-balance sheet promises from the feds, from the treasury, from the FDIC, or from the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco in order to take on the liabilities of this little shed that was Sam Bankman-Fried's bank. And they're doing all of this to prevent the headline of another bank failure. And we're seeing the FDIC and the U.S. Treasury do this a lot. These banks have essentially already failed. They're already insolvent, and the regulators are using taxpayer-funded goodies to entice other banks to come in and buy up the scraps to avoid the unfortunate headlines of another bank failure. We saw that happen with PacWest, we saw that happen with First Republic, and we saw that happen with Silvergate. So you can add Farmington State Bank or Moonstone Bank to the list of failed banks in 2022 that now includes Silvergate Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, First Republic Bank, Credit Suisse, PacWest, Heartland Tri-State Bank, and now Farmington State Bank. But remember, folks, as Secretary Yellen always tells us, our banks are strong, resilient, and well-capitalized. And our regulators have everything under control, just like Mary Daly over at the San Francisco Fed, who personally welcomed this bank into the Federal Reserve System. We wouldn't want people knowing that another bank has failed right under the noses of the regulators who were looking the other way the whole time. Till next time, live small and dream big.